What is happening beneath Naples, Italy, right now, may be the most alarming volcanic development of modern times. For months, we have chronicled the rising tension inside the Campi Flegre supervolcano, the restless caldera hidden beneath the Bay of Naples. The relentless earthquakes, the accelerating uplift, and the unmistakable ground deformation were clear signs of an awakening system. Yet each new measurement keeps redefining the upper limit of concern. Now that system has entered an entirely new stage, one that merges scientific astonishment with genuine fear. Eyewitnesses in the heart of the caldera, especially around Pazzuoli, Agnano, and the Solfatara crater, are reporting something virtually unheard of in an urban setting. Ordinary walls, floors, and even asphalt surfaces have started to radiate dangerous heat. Some residents describe plaster, blistering, and ceramic tiles softening as though a giant oven were hidden beneath their living rooms. Others say basements feel like industrial furnaces, forcing families to sleep in hallways or flee to relatives' homes farther from the bay. Local authorities initially tried to calm the population, attributing the shaking to Bradycism, the long-recognized inflation-deflation cycle that has made Campi Flagre famous among volcanologists. But those standard explanations no longer match reality. When independent thermal cameras register temperatures high enough to deform household materials, conventional Bradycism is no longer the entire story. Something deeper, hotter, and exponentially more dangerous is underway. To grasp the urgency, you first need to understand what Campi Flagre actually is. Unlike the steep, iconic cone of nearby Vesuvius, it is a 15-kilometer-wide caldera an enormous volcanic depression created by two prehistoric catastrophes. Roughly 39,000 years ago, an eruption ejected enough ash to blanket much of Europe and alter global climate. About 15,000 years ago, another violent outburst reshaped southern Italy and left the present-day bowl that shelters more than 3 million people. In the centuries since, the system has simmered rather than slept, accumulating magma and gas inch by inch. Satellite radar shows that since 2005, the ground has been rising gradually, but over the past year, that upward pace has tripled. Entire blocks of Pozzuoli have lifted so dramatically that ancient docks once level with the Tyrrhenian Sea now sit perched above the waterline like stage props from a forgotten era. As the crust inflates, swarms of earthquakes translate the stress into motion, over 50,000 tremors in just a few years. Each fracture is a potential conduit, a microscopic chimney through which searing gases can escape. Every new crack leaves the lithic lid thinner than before. During the last month, sulfur-rich fumaroles that were once lukewarm began jetting scalding vapor. Remote sensors record gas plumes carrying hydrochloric acid, carbon dioxide, and hydrogen sulfide straight into residential neighborhoods. Pets are vomiting. Polished metal corrodes overnight. Most chilling of all, passive infrared scanners, normally used to detect heat loss in buildings, now reveal glowing patches on sidewalks and private courtyards. Heat is literally soaking upward through the stone. Why does that matter? Because heat is the final warning. In any volcano, magma is kept in check by overlying rock acting as a barrier. When the barrier fails, pressurized molecules rush upward, lose confinement, and expand violently. At Campi Flegre, the growing network of fractures means the magma's dissolved gases are already escaping. As the lid vents, the remaining melt becomes lighter, buoyant, and mobile, free to rise more quickly. It is the classic prelude to eruption. Scientists compare the current sequence to the run-up to Monte Nuovo in 1538, when weeks of earthquakes culminated in sudden surface heating, steam explosions, and the birth of a 123-meter-tall cone within just seven days. That eruption was modest on the scale of Campi Flegris past, yet even it buried villages and forced desperate evacuations. The danger today is far greater, not only because the underlying magma body seems larger, but also because the caldera now hosts a densely packed urban landscape crisscrossed by freeways, rail lines, and natural gas pipelines. What might an actual rupture look like? The first phase would almost certainly be phreatomagmatic. Groundwater seeping into hot rock would flash into superheated steam, shattering the crust and launching a towering ash column into the stratosphere. 
Close to the vent, pyroclastic surges, torrents of gas, ash, and incandescent debris could accelerate to hurricane speeds, flattening buildings, flipping vehicles, and overwhelming anyone in their path in seconds. Temperatures inside those surges can exceed 400 degrees Celsius. Beyond the immediate blast zone, ashfall would coat roofs, infiltrate lungs, contaminate water supplies, and ground air traffic across Europe. Because Naples occupies a natural amphitheater formed by ancient lava flows, shock waves could ricochet between ridges, magnifying destruction. The Italian Civil Protection Agency has already raised the official alert level twice this year. Red and yellow evacuation maps illustrate zones where tens of thousands of people might have only minutes to reach safety. Schools conduct regular drills. Hospitals rehearse rapid patient transfers. Yet these measures pale beside the reality of relocating an entire metropolitan population. Narrow streets, centuries-old architecture, and a chronic shortage of outbound highways all conspire against swift flight. Meanwhile, geophysicists scramble to quantify how close magma is to the surface. One team using muon tomography, a method that tracks cosmic ray particles through rock, has detected low-density anomalies only a few hundred meters down. Another group measuring electric resistivity has identified new hot pipes feeding vapor directly beneath Solfatara. Every data set converges on the same conclusion. The system is critically pressurized, and the seal is failing. And while scientists debate exact thresholds, residents cope with ominous day-to-day effects. Bread rises too quickly in kitchen ovens. Tap water emerges warm without a heater. Children playing soccer on neighborhood pitches complain that the turf feels strangely soft underfoot, almost spongy, as if the soil itself is exhaling. Some elders recall the faint metallic rumble they heard during the 1982-84 to seismic crisis, but note that today's tremors carry a deeper, more resonant growl. It sounds like a beast turning in its sleep, says one lifelong Puzuoli fisherman, who now keeps a packed suitcase by the door. The psychological toll is profound. Real estate prices have collapsed in the highest-risk districts, trapping families who would leave if only they could find buyers. Insurance companies refuse new policies inside the red zone. Even Naples' celebrated cafe culture feels subdued. Conversations over espresso inevitably drift toward evacuation routes, pet shelters, and the strain of deciding what single keepsake to save. International aid agencies are drawing up contingency plans, and multiple governments have offered logistical support. Yet coordination remains precarious. The window between a decisive, pre-eruptive signal and the actual blast could be as short as a few hours. Worse, some models suggest a series of smaller vents might open across a broad swath rather than one centralized cone, complicating any last-minute exodus. In that scenario, ash clouds and lava fountains could cut highways or rail lines precisely when they are most desperately needed. All of which circles back to the brutal simplicity of geology— pressure seeks release. The current buildup cannot continue indefinitely. Either the magma will stall and cool, a scenario few experts now consider likely, or it will break through. And every additional degree of heat creeping into basements, every sulfurous exhalation rising from a fresh fracture, argues that breakthrough grows closer. For communities perched atop this monster, the question is no longer if, but when. Will the rupture resemble Monte Nuovo, destructive yet geographically limited? Or will it echo Campanian Ignimbrite, the super-eruption that blackened Paleolithic skies? No contemporary monitoring network has ever watched a restless caldera progress this far toward failure beneath a modern city. We are in scientifically uncharted territory. Yet knowledge, however unsettling, empowers action. Scientists, civil protection teams, and citizens can still shape the outcome by staying informed, following emergency protocols, and supporting transparent data sharing. The tragic eruptions of Nevado del Ruiz, Sufrié Hills, and Hunga Tonga all teach the same lesson. Timely evacuation saves lives even when property lies in ruins. For communities perched atop this monster, the question is no longer if, but when. Will the rupture resemble Monte Nuovo, destructive yet geographically limited, or will it echo 